the Star Family Farm. I'm Christy, and today I don't have an RJ with me unless we're going to call this little guy an RJ. Let's see if we can show you. We have a little duck in here. Let's see. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> Just get him out. Are you being shy? Okay, 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 okay. There he is. And he's got a bum leg. I know. He hisses at everything. <laughs> what? All right, and back in he goes. He just, he doesn't want you messing with him. He's kind of a lonely solitary duck. We use this little thing with um, the goose. It just makes a cute little nest and they seem to hunker down in it and do well. Um, so, let's go into the chapel, right? Um, we're gonna start with Mark 6, 32. So, they went away by themselves in a boat to the solid to a solitary place um, and this will tie in here in just a few minutes um, when you figure out what I'm going to tell you so uh, okay so that's in the chapel and there will be a little of that going on we're gonna start in barn stalls we've got the little duck here we took with all the rain and stuff we had to catch the ducks put them in there the geese have not taken to the ducks and the problem is is that their mom flies away when the wild one wild mom flies away and then comes back by night it leaves the babies vulnerable and the geese who have been protecting the chickens in there is not necessarily liking the ducks so we've had some mishaps this little guy's got a bum leg and we've actually lost a couple um, I, I guess the, the geese just squash them um, I don't know so it is what it is um, we've I've built them in mending fences I built a pen to give them twice as much space and that's when we started having issues with losing the ducks so the only thing it changed is she now can fly out because I didn't put a top on it so I don't know just don't know um, other than that there's really not a whole lot going on. We're getting ready to, um, babies are, are ready to go to home, so we're getting ready to what we call thin down. Uh, that will be going on over the next couple of weeks and get the herd flocks back down to where they are or where they should be. Um, RJ's been riding the horses. Uh, Kavayu is doing awesome. Haven't done a Kavayu update in a while, so yeah. Him and Star. Uh, we had to worm them. They start to look a little thin, but they won't, they're not ever, Department of Land Management doesn't ever put them on green. So we started riding them. And I think we're gonna have to help them understand that grain is a good thing to get their protein up. So um, they're, I like a healthy, stocky looking horse. I don't like it too thin. I really don't like that you can see their ribs at all. They're not thin. They're just not as plump as I like to see them. Yes, I like a little belly on them. That's just the way I am. Uh, I like everything just not look like it's... I just don't want to see everything's ribs. And I know that in animals, that's considered trim. I just don't care for it. So, I like to put a little extra fat on them. That way I know if anything happens, they can skip a meal a day or whatever. You know, if I get in a bind, none of them are going to starve to death because I've got that extra layer on. The Mustangs, however, because we've gone to riding them and they won't eat feed very well, they just don't look as good as I like them to. So um, RJ has kind of laid off riding them a little bit for the last week. He's been really busy with the floods and that. So um, that way we just, you know, he's peeping. Uh, that way everything just kind of lines out and when I say with the floods and everything it's not us we were underwater just like in the pasture or standing water it rolled off pretty decent the roads are open back up and stuff but we have neighbors who are needing help with things that got um, one neighbor had an entire row of fence washed out like the water was rolling so fast and so high it just ripped the fence out so he has been helping others get things back together um, getting things back together 
uh, for their pastures and their cattle and you know it's kind of got to do for everybody it's not just about us so um Moose is eyeballing my yellow thing he knows there's something in there um let's see what else has been going on we've got mending fences in the yarn farm we've had school field trips out here our last school field trip for that is scheduled um, unless anybody else calls me um, the last school field trip was scheduled and we are pretty much done with school field trips um, homeschool association school field trips blah 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 that kind of stuff quote of the day the other day it was Friday and we've made it all the way around the farm we've talked about the horses we've talked about the cattle we've talked about everything we get to what we call centers um, we get to the one where RJ is and this is the one where they ride the horse and they rope the dummy while they wait for their turn to ride the horses and uh, there was one little boy who showed up in cowboy boots cowboy hat he was rocking the whole cowboy thing and uh, I asked him I said okay you know so we've talked about this farm and stuff and we've talked about agriculture and how it impacts your life I said so what makes RJ a cowboy if he's not a farmer he's a cowboy and what what makes him a cowboy instead of a farmer this little boy with all and he had heard us talk about RJ and talk about how he ropes and he showed him belt buckles and all this stuff none of the kids raised their hand but this little guy He's probably eight years old. He slaps that hand up there with, like, he just knows what he's talking about. So I call him and say, okay, little man, you know, what makes RJ a cowboy? He looks at him because he's been a, cha a world champion for a thousand years. And he says it with, like, the confidence of he knows he's right. And RJ looks at him and he goes, you're my new biggest fan, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he liked it. He got to ride the horse. He was right there with RJ. That little man loved it. So not that the other kids didn't. We had Ashley, the intern, working the um, plant, planting the plants. They learned to milk goats with me. They learned about spinning wool into yarn with me. They did some self-guided um, centers. They learned about how to make, how to generate wind without blowing. We do it with bubbles. Um, wind farm is what we t discuss in that one. Um, fun fact, uh, fruits and vegetables, fun facts. Uh, I can't even remember what all we put out for them. But they had they had a blast. And honestly, you know, I think they had fun. I had kids tell me this was the best field trip they'd ever been on. So they got to hand feed the sheep and goats. Uh, we talked about nutrition. We talked about how... They rode the bus there, so agriculture affected their life because that's what goes in, you know, walls transmissions, keep them overheating, um, all kinds of stuff. We covered it all. Um, and Bear, it was so funny because the adults, children know no fear, and they trust me explicitly when they come here because when they come, they're given the rules. And I tell them, if you follow the rules, you won't get hurt. If you don't follow the rules, you know, there's a chance you could. And I lay down the law to him and tell him, if I have to push him time out, you're done. And they don't ever question it. No one went in time out Friday at all. And we had range from, I think, pre-K to third grade with this group. I, I, beep, beep, beep. Um, but nobody went in time out. I've put adults in time out before. I've put children in time out before. But this group was really good about it. Didn't have any problems. But the, the chaperones are the ones, I tell them flat out that Bear is my boyfriend. And I tell them that. And I say, oh, we got to go. Next step, we're going to go see my boyfriend. And Bear is the big longhorn steer with the, with the horn that curls down this away and out this away. And uh, we get over there and Be Moose, no, you're not getting the duck. Leave it alone and go, just go back to sleep. Um, anyway, so we get over there and they line up and here comes Bear. Bear gets intimidated by groups and so he starts bucking. Now he doesn't buck like you see on TV. Those big long horns just prevent him from bucking like that. But he stomps and he does this and he snorts and he jumps in the air and he runs at the fence and then he jumps backwards. 
the adults take jumps five jumps back. The children are like, yay, this is cool. And I'm just standing there and I'm looking at the adults. And the best line I've ever heard when, I, when it happens, the adults, like I said, get back. We had a family out here and this didn't happen on this trip, but it's the best reaction I've ever seen to when he does it. Um, this lady was out here and she had her grandkids with her and it's Mr. T's grandma. If you follow us and you know who Mr. T is, it's Mr. T's grandma. She came out with grandkids. There was Mr. T, um, his sister, the daughter, and something. Anyway, so all the grandkids are up front and they're in the back and Bear comes out and does his thing. Grandma takes off. She is running. And I looked at her and I said, hey, what about your grandkids? She looked at her grandkids and she says, y'all need to learn if I'm running, you better be running too. <laughs> and the kids just looked at her and go, what are you running for? He's behind the fence. And she just looked at him. She was, it's classic. Adults are scared of him, and children, with all their wonder, just love him. And he'll come out, and sometimes he'll take a cookie from me, sometimes he won't. But they see him just as this big giant, and he's amazing to see. Um, they're scared of him once the adults get involved, because that's when everybody kind of steps back or whatever. But it's okay. It just shows the wonder of a child. So, we had that field trip going on. Had a lot of fun. Um, RJ was definitely, you know, he's been a world champion for a thousand years. I was just amazed. I don't know where they get it, but he was happy. Um, and it kind of touched RJ. He told him, he said, good job, little man. <laughs> he said, but no. <laughs> um, Yes, I'm tired. RJ was out roping last night. He's roping today. I haven't even addressed where he's at. Um, he left here Friday after the kids. I took off work to do that big of a group because RJ can't have, can't really handle that big of a group when we've got that many centers going on. And uh, so I took off from work on that Friday. So that afternoon, I had to run up and get my glasses. And there was something else, but I don't remember. I had to run to Walmart and get some stuff. And anyway, so I did that, got back. He took my truck. He made two rodeos. He made uh, Owasso and Beggs. Beggs, I think he placed second in. Owasso, I don't think he did any good. Then he went on to Austin's house, which is just right down there. Then him and Austin the next morning got up early and left to go do two more rodeos. And then Saturday night, they got back to Austin's place which I guess was last night. Hmm. They were they ended up three hours away from the house. They got back to Austin's and it was one thirty something, two o'clock when he finally got back up here. And then he had to get up early and be gone by seven thirty. So yeah. He's at a team roping right now. Um, he came to rope with cat went to rope with cash in a team rope and it's for a trailer. So anyway, that's going on and that's where he's at. And I'm tired because I stayed up waiting for him to get home and all that kind of stuff. I didn't I lay down but I don't sleep until he's in the house. That's just part of having a kid who has had some issues, you just doesn't matter how old he gets, I'm still going to always have that deer in the headlight look until he gets home. So, anyway, um, let's see. What else did I get done this week? I built the little enclosure. We had the kids that cleaned the entire barn. Oh, I made goat's milk soap today, and it's curing. So, in six to eight weeks, we'll have some soap. Um, trying to think. We're going to do the fireflies and stargazing on June 21st, I think. Let me look at the calendar here. I can't remember. I think it's June 20. Maybe it's the 20th or the 24th. Let me see here. Probably should have gotten my act together before I did that, huh? Okay, so it's going to be June 21st. Is going to be Fireflies and Stargazing. And the following week, 
starting June 29th for the first week of July, 4th of July, all the way to July 7th. We will be closed. Um, all I'm going to say is sometimes life gets rough. Friends aren't what they always seem to be. And things can just go wrong. Not necessarily wrong, but off kilter. And sometimes you just need moose. No. My duck. Sometimes you just need to recharge. And so that is what we're going to do. Moose, come on. Stop. I'm filming. I'm going to have to get on to you. Um, that is the week that we have chosen. It's not a week we chose. There's a reason for it that doesn't need to be discussed here. But the first week in July, from June 29th to July 7th, we're closed. It's that simple. We're recharging our batteries. We are going to get ourselves back on track in the right state of mind, whatever you want to call it. We have been doing this for literally years and never closed this farm down just because. We'll take a day here, a day there. Um, but this year, we're done and we need to have a break. And so we are taking a break and we will come back strong. And it's just, it's like from one Saturday to the following Sunday. It's just a week. It's not like it's a big, big, long break, but we're going where there is no cell phone service. We're going where there is no Wi-Fi. We are going where there's no anything. Um, some pools, good food, hot tubs, jacuzzis, fitness center. We're just taking a break, taking a rest. So, um, yeah. That's going to go on. Just saying. We haven't ever done anything like that. And, I mean, we close in the winter, but we're still open on certain days, and we're always open by appointment. So someone's always here on the farm. That week, we are closed. There will be one person here to do the chores. Um, that's it. And, honestly, I'm taking both of my children with me. Actually, all three of my children with me. Taking RJ, my daughter, and her husband. And we're taking a much needed mental break. So uh, it is what it is. Please don't read anything into it. Don't expand on it. It's just a mental break. It's well needed, well deserved. I guess much needed, well deserved. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so it's happening. Other than that, there really isn't anything going on. It's hot, yucky. Uh, taking care of animals doing we did our spa day which it went over amazing we didn't get to podcast last week because where was RJ at? I can't remember we kept saying we'd do it the next day we'd do it the next day and then something would happen that day and we just didn't get it done so um, I had Ashley with me a lot last week because we went from spa day to um, switching it from adult to children real fast and we had to redo the whole barn for that. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's, and it rained some too. And I worked, so, yeah. <laughs> and like I said, RJ's been out working for, you know, getting things done. I had to go get my eyeglasses, my contacts, all that kind of stuff. Just a lot of little things, nothing major. Um, other than that, I really don't think there's a whole lot going on. He's, RJ's doing pretty good with his Roka. Um. Um, nursing me a little baby duck. I gave him a water bowl and they're like oval shaped and he climbed in it instead of drinking it. I don't know. Uh, Moose, of course, is hanging out with me. He's finally going back to sleep. It's just he wants a duck. But he wants to play with the duck and he plays too rough with the duck so the duck wouldn't survive. But anyway, other than that, I think I'm going to get off here. I know it's short, sweet. Um, we're just trucking along. So. I will talk to you guys next week and 
we will do what we're going to do. RJ and I will be podcasting both weekends, just so you know. Um, you might get to see a little bit of where we're at and what we're doing, but we'll keep you informed. And I will talk at y'all later. Have a great one. Bye.